So it just got a little bit steeper then. It's my heart is really pounding. Lucky who I've run into. Oh, sorry, Lord. Welcome back, I'm Bordard. It's 26 degrees Celsius up here. I'm in Mashiko on Pico do Fascio. It's the hill which you can see from Mashiko City. And it's my first time here. I thought I'd show you around and take a look because there are some marvelous views to behold, as you can see from here. That's the first point. I'm gonna show you Ponte de Sao Lorenzo in the distance, which looks like a dragon's tail with that headland jutting outwards to the right. And we'll just go past this restricted area because hopefully this bit I'm on now isn't restricted. And we are actually on the extreme northeast of the island or rather Ponte de Sao Lorenzo would be the more northeast of the island over there. And you can go down a bit further at your own peril. Shall I risk it for the biscuit? <laughs> yes, I will. Now, carefully does it, but it's fine. It's actually fine. There's no railings or anything. So here we are. Oh, <laughs> I almost stumbled there. I'm just too eager to get down to the viewpoint. Wow, look at that. There is Mashiko in all its splendor. And if it looks familiar to you, I actually stayed there at the end of March 2022 when I returned back to Madeira. And it's one of the places which has a sandy beach. It's fake, it's sand imported from Morocco. And just there to the top of the frame, you can see the airport. So you get a great view of watching the planes take off and land. I don't know if there's any due, but I'm sure there is in the next few minutes. So down these steps I go. It's easy enough. They're like fire exit steps. Those, oh, it just got a little bit steeper then. So I'm gonna hold, I'm holding onto the handrail there. I'm sure they could have installed a lift for me. No, that's asking too much. <laughs> so the metal stairs end, and then we go onto concrete steps with the bit of wood on the edge of them. So down we go. And I see that cactus in front of me. I think that's prickly pear. And do you all know that prickly pear was originally a cactus? Well, it's meant to be a cactus and it's not actually a pear. If I'm wrong, I give you permission to comment below and tell me, oh dear, this plank just suddenly collapsed under me. I better move it to the side in case someone falls on it. So that's my good deed done for the day. <laughs> I'm chuffed at that. <laughs> no, it actually is a glorious day. I couldn't have asked for better weather. And we're in the middle of October and I was told that this is unseasonably warm for Madeira for this time of the year. But I'm not complaining, I'm not gonna whinge about it. I'll just embrace and enjoy the moment. Okay, so there is some pole, whatever that is for, or is it a light at the end of it? And a ladder. So we just go across these steps here, be careful. No railings on that. And I'm just simply enthralled by the views as well. So just watch your stepping because if you're checking out the views and not concentrating on the path in front of you, you could be playing roly-poly all the way down the hill. And is that the end of it? Just watch these steps here. I'm taking it easy. Almost there. And yay. <laughs> We are almost at the end. Another one of those red and white poles with a ladder on it. And I dare say you could find a pathway to lead you further down, but 
I'll just go a little bit more further. I'm not going to risk it too much for the biscuit. What I'm going to do, I will, oh, tempting as it is, I'm going to stop here. Yes, I think that's sensible. And even though I'd love to go to the end, there's still so much to do in so little time. But whilst I'm here, I'll just give you a pano view of what's around me. And no, Mark, I'm not going to launch the drone because as you can see, that's a blooming airport over there. Do you want to get me arrested or something? <laughs> so no flying camera on this peak. So right, I'm going to explore the rest of Pico do Foro. Pico do Fascio. What's it called, Alonso? Pico do Fascio. Pico do Fascio, I think it is anyway. I said it at the beginning, but I'm terrible with names. Okay, see you in a moment whilst I show you the other side of the mountain. Oh my goodness, that is the view looking back from whence I came. And that looks terrifying. I can't believe that I've just walked all that there. Now I'm back to the car. I really worked up a sweat there. And as you can see, I'm debuting my t-shirt for the first time officially out in public. So I'm hoping for a few subscribers if they see this free advertising on my part, <laughs> if they're generous enough to hit that button. I'll be chuffed if I do anyway. So let us see further on this side of Pico do Fascio. It's a little food truck there, a snack bar, a snack truck rather. Oh, and I think they do poncha there as well. And there's a Espatada place to grill them, to grill your meat on skewers. They think of everything here. Picnic benches. More steps. This is facing into Mashiko City in front of me. Let's have a look here. There's a gentleman there working away, repainting the fence or the railings. Botard. Oh, is that a plane? It's just taken off there. Now, can my avid plane spotters, I know it's in the distance, can they name what type of plane this is? Might be too far away for them to suss out. Try as I might. You never know. We have experts like Mark and Jair Lingus to hand. <laughs> so go up these steps. And check out the view here. And you can see a better view of Mashiko City from this side. And the beach too. And... Just beyond those trees, I'll put a red arrow anyway, to help you. That's where I stayed, approximately there, back in March 2022. All right, there's a final set of steps to contend with here. Oh, really breaking up the sweat here, as you can see. All these steps combined with the humidity and the heat. Okay, let's go here. Watch out for these steps here. I wonder if that's for the local pussy cats. There's water and a makeshift bin made into a, a little cat house. Yeah, another gentleman here painting away. Botad, senor. To the bem. Vosi fala English. Oh, pardon. That's the only Portuguese I know. <laughs> but anyway, it's a little bit higher from below and you can see more of Mashiko and the airport, of course. And some more steps here. Let's see where they go to. So Mike and Yvonne who are watching this, I don't know if on your YouTube channel, Living Walks, that you have done this walk at all. But if not, I beat you to it. <laughs> right. Oh, these steps are very jaggedy, worn away. Or simply carved into the natural wood. That must be the masts for communications, TV, radio, etc. And I'm just going to walk up 
this way because I'll take a while and rest after this but this is all for your benefit so if you truly appreciate me hit the link where it says ko-fi.com and coffee or kofi is most welcome for my efforts <laughs> no this is as far as I'm gonna go and I'm gonna head down and take a well earned break it's my heart is really pounding doing all these steps and that okay see you down there So let's see what this food truck has to offer. Having a look at the menu there. Juices, tea, Madeira wine, coffee, and the best part, poncha, only three euro. And it's cash only. <laughs> and in case you're caught short, they have conveniences up here too. So that is very handy to know. And it's right next to the food truck. Lucky who I've run into is Andrea, Jeff from Hit The Road Tours, videographer. Yeah, the so, man behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and he normally says at the end, What's it the road? And now you see his face saying it. We're here at Avenida Ariga. Is that what Ariaga, it's called? Ariaga, yes. Ariaga, I Ariaga. never pronounce you it correctly. You can say Ariaga. And I love this street <laughs> because it's where the bulk of the flower festival takes place with all the huts, That's which true. are usually over there. And That's then fine. you've got that famous venue, the Ritz, just there. And then I love this park over there, the Municipal Park. So anyway, I'm here especially for Andrea because he was involved in a show. So please tell me about what's going to be happening in a few minutes. So in a few minutes, we'll, people will see uh, another screening. It's going to be the fifth screening, fifth time. Uh, of a showing of a documentary that I uh, directed back in 2022 and uh, it's so lovely to notice that two years after it's still being shown and this is actually the final screening ever until it lives on the internet wow. on a pay-per-view uh, wall yeah. on Vimeo so it's a documentary about a group of uh, prison inmates that got uh, confronted with art Mm -hmm. and some artists went inside the prison to show them what they do and to teach them their trade and these uh, inmates became artists themselves and they created a merchandise line called Tregua which is also the name of the documentary and it's a 15 minute long documentary and I hope you like it. Ah, I'm sure I will. So what I will do, if that's all right with you, I'll put some information in the description sure of your work so you can send it on to me as soon as you can. Of course. Because we are connected on Facebook and Instagram. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. We're right. friends already, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and muito obrigado, amigo. De nada. Obrigado, okay. Ru. Oh my god, Andre, that was absolutely wonderful. All I can say Thank you very much. is wow. How are you feeling, my friend, after that? Oh, uh, well, you know, like I mentioned, this is the fifth um, screening, and uh, I, I'm always anxious 
uh, in every single one of yeah. them because the crowd is different the questions will be different yeah. and the opinions will be different so of course that uh, I'm always a little bit on edge with these yeah. things so now I feel lighter because it already happened the yeah. questions have already been answered yeah. and now I have a, a cocktail and I have like a dinner to Any attend puncher? to uh, I don't know <laughs> let's see let's see if there's any puncha to ease up the, yeah. the stress and the, and the anxiousness um, unfortunately all the questions were in Portuguese but one was in English and I love the fact that he noticed the light at the end of the tunnel yes yeah. he did he did Even and uh, it was a coincidence it was a coincidence yeah. but again like I said it's like to work with what you have and yeah. to make the most out of it so yeah. that's what that exactly is, what I did that is why you are so creative in your endeavors thank you very much and I appreciate bro. you from 2,500 kilometers away <laughs> I've <laughs> come all much. this way thank and one more much. question yeah sure where can you buy those Tregua t-shirts that's a good question because yeah. I'm not the person to ask that question oh. is the is Katarina which is the okay. producer of this yeah. endeavor right <laughs> and this documentary so from what I can understand is that each year they yeah release a collection for mm -hmm. that year so maybe this year there will be a new collection okay. and uh, I think they're working on getting these online yeah so not currently but in the near future hopefully okay well do let me know please sure sure thing. and enjoy your after party my friend thank you very much Ru, and thank welcome. you for coming okay thanks guys <laughs> thank you thank you Ru. We are now in Balafai Snack Bar on the recommendation of Mr. Joe Perilla. Let me introduce you to my server, Carlos. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? I hope uh, you guys watching this video that uh, you can enjoy of uh, the host eating the, the good fish that he's going to eat like uh, Dorada Sea Bream. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's all I can say. And I'm sure that you make great food here. Of course, I'm looking forward to it. The fish I've ordered, I've never tried that before. So, so basically it's a white fish. So it's it's a little bit that uh, has a, has that, that kind of a strong taste, all right. So it's like a really good fish, fresh. Uh, my chef may prepares it like ninety five percent boneless, all right. So it's it might have one bone or two, but it's a really good fish that is grilled, and it's it comes from the Madeira seas, literally like all the fish that we have on the blackboards, but we restock the product yeah. once per day in the morning. So during the lunch periods is the best time to eat for fresh fish. Let's just say today we had sardines in the lunch periods. What happened during the evening? We didn't have it because everyone went for sardines. Yeah. So that's why we don't freeze the products. Okay. Can, can, can you give me a second? Okay. So as you were saying, as I was saying, so yeah, normally we always stock the products once per day. My chef prepares everything in the morning when he comes here and he always goes to the, to the market. So feel free to come once to try it out. If you love it, you'll you want to come back once more. And not just for the meat and fish, we always have a really good homemade desserts. It's mainly cheesecakes, but normally we got like passion fruit cheesecake, mango cheesecakes, fair or shit cheesecake version, yeah, or caramel Oreo cheesecakes, Oreo cheesecake that has a dark chocolate on top of it. I mean, it's really sinful cheesecake, that's for sure. But you would love to come here. Yeah. Thank you for that, and I'm really looking forward to savoring your food here this evening. No worries, and don't forget to have enough space for homemade desserts, even if it is to share, okay? Okay, so here we are, Dorada Sea Bream. Yes, as you can see, look at that. And you'll see a close-up shot now. And I've asked for half potatoes and half rice. Let's just savour this. I'm going to try a bit the potato first. And there's no added sauces or anything like that. They kept it as natural as possible. And that is damn good, that potato. It's got a bit of sprinkled dried herbs on it. And now the fish. I've got a proper fish knife as well. Look at that. Soft and fleshy. Wow. The aftertaste, you get a bit of salt in it. It's manageable. 
Now I know why Joe Perilla recommends this place. That is absolutely wow, you know my goodness. Good. I'll squeeze a bit of lemon on it. It it's a huge lemon as well. <laughs> and there's actually a prawn on it too. Oh, sorry, I was Did you knock it by any chance? It just fell. All right, let me stabilize it. Keep that down. Take two. <laughs> There's actually a prawn. <laughs> so, that fell into Alonso's food then, but you're okay. <laughs> let me try this prawn. They always seem to be cooked in their skins, and I prefer them to be peeled, but no one really peels them. So I'll just try and fight it and get a bit of it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rushing, that's why. Okay, here you go, look at that. Mm. That's soft. Juicy, full of prawn flavor. That's how it should be. Yes, I'm gonna enjoy this. And the rice as well. Savory flavor to it. You can taste vegetables in that too. That's good. Right, you can leave me in peace now. And I'm gonna enjoy this to the full. And the price of it was, is 14 euro for all this. Mm. Muito obrigado. And Madeira wine, gratis. Why not? <laughs> and Alonso got one too. Saúde. Mm. That would be my limit. Saúde. Looks like someone's enjoyed themselves with the local brew, that which is Corral and then Superbock from the mainland. <laughs> I don't know if it, there's a bin below, but they've no excuse. They can bring it home with them. Okay, folks, we are at Bella Fai Snack Bar on the, on the recommendation of Mr. Joe Perilla. And I'll start again. What is it again? I've forgotten what it is. Was it silver bream? Silver... I can't see the menu. I've completely forgotten the name of the food. So what was the name of the fish? Sorry, I forgot the Gerard name. The sea Dorada yeah. Sea Bream. Okay, yeah. Dorada. It's a Pingodos van going past the apartment. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 